On March the 29th, 2017, Big Wet, real name Jerry Jacobs, was walking on the sidewalk on the 7900 block of South Phillips at 11.13pm, when a dark vehicle approached and four men jumped out, shooting Jerry in the body as he tried to flee. He made it to the hospital, but was pronounced dead at 3.40am on March the 30th. Following his death, the police would come out publicly to say that Big Wet was indeed a documented gang member. Big Wet was apparently an OG in No Limit, the Chicago gang that had been battling for decades for control of Terror Town, and he had apparently faced murder charges twice in the past. Some have suggested that Big Wet's killer may have been shooter shells from Black Mob, but for the record, others have contended this version of events. But much more shocking than the actual murder of Big Wet was actually what came next. Because less than 24 hours after the murder of his father, Big Wet, Lil Wet, aka Wet Em Up from No Limit, would hit the streets in a fit of rage hoping to get revenge. Police would later claim that Lil Wet went into the Nadia Fish and Chicken restaurant at the corner of East 75th Street and South Coles Avenue, this being within a mile of his father's death location. Outside the restaurant, was four men. Two were chased into the restaurant and fatally shot in front of shocked diners, and the two other men attempted to run away, ultimately being chased down and fatally shot dead in two different nearby parking lots. And apparently two of the deceased men were blood brothers, visiting their mother who worked at this restaurant, with their own grandmother being seen, pictured by the news, breaking down at the scene upon discovering the tragic news, and would later appear in an interview with local news at the scene of the crime, with the distraught mother being led away from the scene in tears. <laughs> We had heard maybe there was a shoot, there were, there were shots fired inside the restaurant, then they came back. Yeah, out. they were shooting at somebody, they say, inside the restaurant. My boys just got in the way, I guess. So they were shooting inside they the They got two bodies inside the restaurant of somebody else's kids, I imagine. They said it's two boys inside the restaurant. So if they got two bodies inside and two outside, oh, they just killed a whole bunch of kids up today. I just know my baby, one there and one down the street. Now they was outside. I guess they run in different directions trying to get away from the shots. It's saddening to me because they got my babies out here in the rain and the water just laying on the sidewalk. I mean, cover them up or something, they just open. They just laying there on the street. They've been out here for almost four hours. Four hours, how do you lay a kid on the ground? <laughs> Lil Wet, real name Maurice Harris, would later be arrested by police after allegedly being identified as the shooter being charged with all four murders, with the police even publicly stating his involvement in the No Limit gang as part of the Black Pea Stones, with the cops quickly fixating on the murder of his father Big Wet the day before as a clear motive, with the arrest for this mass shooting that claimed four lives, even making it to the TV news, which is a rarity in Chicago where murder is so commonplace. Well, police make an arrest in a shooting that killed four people in the South Shore neighborhood. The suspect lost his father to gun violence just the day before. Police say the two cases are related and both are tied to gang conflicts. Tonight, one man is in custody, 19-year-old Maurice Harris, and investigators say he is not cooperating with them. Police say the quadruple murders outside this South Shore restaurant were a planned execution in retaliation for the murder of Maurice Harris's father, Jerry Jacobs, who, like his son, was a documented gang member. Jerry Jacobs is murdered. Then 24 hours later, his own son goes and kills four people. So obviously, those two incidents are related. 19-year-old Maurice Harris is now being held without bail on four counts of first-degree murder. It is his first charge as an adult, but not his first run-in with Chicago police. While I can't go into, into the specifics, into his extensive juvenile history, as we've seen too many times before here in Chicago, he's no stranger to CPD nor is he unfamiliar with using an illegal handgun. Tonight, in the South Shore neighborhood, the chicken and fish restaurant is open again, even while neighborhood residents come by to see where such a violent crime occurred. This would be a huge case, and beating it would seem impossible to Lil Wet. Funnily enough, his No Limit homie G Herbo would even rap about the situation on his song Four Minutes of Hell, saying that his little cousin is fighting four bodies, and that if he beats them, he's gonna fly him out to Egypt. Perhaps Herbo thought that beating such serious charges would be impossible for his cousin. But in one of the most surprising turn of events in this story, despite police claiming to have had witnesses positively ID Lil Wet as the shooter, 
computer in June 2020 after spending over three years in jail awaiting trial, prosecutors would drop all charges against Lil Wet. Apparently, despite even having witnesses pick Lil Wet out in a photo array, ultimately the state's attorney found that the eyewitness accounts to be unreliable, with the cops claiming insufficient evidence to move forward with the case. With Wet's attorneys going on to say they had provided a strong alibi that apparently proved Lil Wet could not be the real shooter. After the news broke, Lil Wet would be released, being seen on social media celebrating and laughing the moment he got out. <laughs> go on to open up about beating these charges in a 16 shot him interview, sporting an enormous smile and taking an enormous hit on the blunt when 16 asks him about his father being murdered. So I, I want to go back to like uh, around a time like with the situation with your father. Like, first of all, I don't say RP to your father. Mm -hmm. But you know, like when that happened, you got the news. What, what were you like? What was you doing? Man, I was I was doing what I was doing. He would go on to say that when he found out his dad died, everything went dark and he woke up being charged with four murders. Everything just went dark. Like, it was just, it's hard to, hard to explain. Like, everything just went dark. What time was you facing? Shit, I was facing shit like hell. Life. I was, nothing, nothing else. Like, hell. Ultimately, Wet would say that the cop's case was based entirely on gossip, suggesting that they had rushed the case. I was communicating shit the lack of evidence. They she had a lack of evidence. They they rushed their case too fast and she when it all when it all came out, the truth came out, she they rushed their case too fast. The lack of evidence. So what evidence was they using? Or was it just like some type of He say, she say, she, she oh, you yeah. know how the streets just talk. It's also worth noting that according to NBC News, Lil Wet and his family had apparently previously filed a lawsuit against Chicago police in relation to an illegal strip search that was carried out when Lil Wet was just a minor. But NBC5 has confirmed that last year, Harris's family filed a federal lawsuit against the department related to an alleged incident involving a strip search by two off-duty Chicago police officers when Harris was just 14 years old. One officer involved has since left the force. The department is not commenting on that case. Ultimately, despite claims of an open and shut case, Chicago police would drop all the charges and Lil Wet would be a free man once again. Now, for the record, many believe that there is perhaps much more to the story. And if police truly didn't have enough evidence to convict Lil Wet, then surely someone else must have done the crime. But regardless of who you believe was truly responsible, Lil Wet would return home free of any consequence at all. And naturally, off the back of the sheer scale of the crime that he was accused of, he would become a mythical figure in the history of No Limit, with endless speculation over whether or not he was responsible for these four brutal murders. But unfortunately for No Limit, while Little Wet was in jail, they would end up losing another one of their members, the one possibly with the most feared reputation of all, Mad Max.